Okay, so now we're going to attempt to get the MSI Z170A Pro Carbon, uh, Gaming Pro Carbon, into BIOS. Um, however, we had a little bit of difficulty doing so, at least getting the BIOS to look right. But we're going to re uh, recreate our steps and kind of show you some of the mistakes that we made at this stage. Um, so if, if I come over here, I'm dealing with a, a regular, you know, kind of a rather inexpensive uh, TV, actually, that has HDMI. So I'm going to connect the HDMI into the uh, HDMI port on the MSI Pro Carbon. Of course, and that's right here. So I'm just going to connect this guy in. So my goal is, of course, to uh, is to be able to you know get the BIOS to show on the screen. That's 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 my goal. And I'm just kind of recreating some of my steps that I had done. Um, so at this point. We already did a smoke test. Um, we need a little power, obviously, so we're going to connect some power, and we're going to see what happens. So all I'm doing is connecting this in. My uh, monitor should be on as soon as I turn on the power here. So I'm going to basically just go and turn on the power to my battery backup. The monitor should turn on. Let's see how it is here. Okay, there it is. Please wait. It's an HDMI. So we know that we have um, you know, the monitor working. <clears throat> Okay, so the next step is to turn on the uh, MSI uh, Z170 Pro Carbon. I'm going to flip the switch there. <coughs> and then <coughs> turn it on. And of course, initially I thought, well, this would be enough to actually get um, us to see. Oh, look at that. All of a sudden we can see something. Oh, we do see BIOS. And I'm surprised that we can actually see it that easily because the first time I went through this, I could not see anything. Now this... Obviously, it doesn't look 100% right, though. So if you look at that, you know, um, if you look at any of the screens that are normally shown on uh, MSI's website, that doesn't quite look right, and I haven't figured out why yet. <clears throat> it's also a little bit warm today, and that's not good. Um, typically, I think, um, of course, we don't have our CPU cooling apparatus in place either, so... I'm, I'm guessing that what's going to happen right now is we will, uh, uh, it'll run for a while and it's going to shut off. And I think if it shuts off, it's going to be basically because it's noticing that it's over temperature um, and it shuts down as a safety mechanism. So if you look here, of course, I, I don't have a keyboard connected. And typically I should be uh, connecting all my peripherals before I power up. So I'm going to turn this down for now. I'm going to turn, turn it off. And uh, that was actually easier than my first attempt. My first attempt with just this HDMI, it did not even give me any indication of BIOS. So I thought, well, there must be something wrong. So here's the steps that I went through to get BIOS to show up. Um, for one thing, uh, there's a little, I figured, well, we need a keyboard connected. So let's uh, connect the keyboard as soon as I can find it. Oh, here's the keyboard. Uh, it's a... USB keyboard, so I'm just plugging that in right next to the um, MSI, uh, the HDMI cable. I also went so far as to plug in the uh, the optical and the um, SSD drive. Okay, of course, uh, this requires power. If you can shine, can you shine your? I guess you're not. You don't really have any light with that camera there, so we're gonna turn this around a bit. And try to get some light on the power supply because I need to basically here's another type 4 connector and a type 4 is just a very generic connector that they have and we just need to plug it into any of these that say peripheral and SATA because this is basically a SATA um, um, power connector here so I'm going to plug it in right here this is the only power connector I'm going to need I only have two I have my I have my SSD drive right here. I have my optical drive right here. I'm just going to scoot around here now that we can we were able to show you that. I'm going to try to. Of course, one of the problems is me getting in the way of the light. That makes it hard for you to see as well as for me. And then I'm going to plug this in. And if you I don't know if you can see you're at the wrong angle there, Mr. Cameraman. So you want to be able to show the. Uh, power connector there. We're going to plug into that power connector there. And then there's a similar power connector here up here on the optical drive. That's what we're doing to connect the um, 
connector to set up peripherals and I'm going to just basically if I can get this right this guy up here might be easier if that plugs right in this guy right here of course I'm having a problem seeing okay there once I caught the left edge which has a little bit of a key in it then I was able to put that right in. Okay, so that's the power connector. Now, obviously, we need our data connectors as well. Now, there's one with the right angle. That's good for the optical optical drive. And there's another one that has the, uh, it's just a straight connector. And that's good for our SSD. So, the main thing with the um, Pro Carbon is this, this port right here is the uh, SATA 1. This is SATA 2. So, we're going to, Use SATA 1 for our, our SSD drive. And we're basically just going to... The metal uh, levers, they seem to work well when they're up on top, which is good. That makes it easy. You just press down to pull them out. Um, same thing here. We're going to put this in. And you know you have it in if when you, you know, tug on it just gently and it doesn't come out. It doesn't always give you a snapping noise, which I like to hear because then I know that I have things properly connected. So here, that snaps in nicely. This one did not snap in nicely, but it does seem to be in there good. Okay, so that's all I did. Like I said, the first time I tried this, and I just had the HDMI port connected, I really got nothing. Um, and so I was very concerned. All right, so here, um, I still would like to get the BIOS better. The BIOS is really not showing up properly, but let's see what happens this time. I don't know if it's a, a matter of trying more than once or maybe I'm just trying something different here. So I'm going to throw this switch. And of course, just throwing that switch doesn't turn it on. You have to use the front panel. Can you come over here, here uh, Mr. Cameraman? Of course, maybe you can't see that too well unless I turn the light around. You got it? Good. So then we just have to press on this, and that turns the motherboard on. It's also turning on the optical drive, which I believe probably still has my Windows installation disk in it. So I think this time we're probably going to go, and of course one of the, pro okay, you can see we're doing something there. Oh, press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. Let's see if this works this time. Last time it did not work. Um, Let's see, do we have a key here? I'm pressing on a key. Maybe I had the wrong thing connected. Let's see what we got. Okay, this guy is connected. But it's not registering. Oh, we're actually not um, in the... We don't need to press the loop. That's how you would get into the BIOS. Okay, so we're having a little bit of trouble here. It says, press any key to boot from your CD or DVD, and we're actually not getting anything. This guy is not registering at all. What if I try a different port and see what happens then? We're not having, there's no, uh, none of our debug LEDs are on. So those guys are off, so we should be doing okay. Our keyboard is not cooperating with us right now. So this is a, actually a new problem that I haven't seen before. Um, and uh, it just basically means that whatever we're typing on the keyboard here is not actually making it to the motherboard. Um, and so that's where we're at at the moment. You cut. Okay, so I made a couple changes since our last uh, video where we we're having trouble uh, getting into BIOS. Um, mainly, all I changed was uh, instead of a, a TV uh, with HDMI, I went to this Acer computer monitor with DVI. Um, so that just a simple DVI connection, and then I'm just using this Logitech, Logitech um, Q 
keyboard and mouse with a little uh, one of these little USB gizmos. Um, and this this setup seems to be working okay. Also, another thing is, you know, rather than having the keyboard plugged into this port, I have it plugged into one of these regular USB ports. Uh, so last time when I was trying, I think I had it, the uh, an older keyboard plugged into this uh, this uh, red uh, looks like a USB port. It has the same connection as a USB port, but the keyboard did not work there. So we're going to try with this port, and we're going to work with the uh, DVI connection for the computer monitor. And basically, we just want to get the BIOS. So this is the next step in our smoke test. Make sure that we're um, our system is okay. So. I've got the power turned on back near the power supply and I'm going to flip the switch here and we should see everything come on all right good and now I want to come over here and basically to get into BIOS we have to hit the delete key at the right time we're gonna see okay there we go it flashed the uh, race car screen and we're in um, and of course this BIOS here is working nicely with the mouse um, just with that little USB uh, uh, wireless um, gizmo, and um, and it looks quite nice here. So we can see we can monitor the CPU temperature. See, it starts out at 66 degrees. Um, one thing to pay attention to is um, the motherboard temperature is not that bad. Remember, this is Celsius, so when you get to um, 74 Celsius, that's pretty hot. Um, and if you pan over here to the CPU, notice we do not have our cooling system in place yet, so. That's one of the reasons why this is getting too hot. So this is not a good situation for the CPU. So we're going to actually shut it down, um, and we have to we have to kind of get uh, get our um, our Corsair uh, H110i installed. Uh, and that's going to require a new case. So we basically will be getting a new case tomorrow, and that will um, enable us to keep our CPU temperature under control. So basically, right now this is not good for the computer. Um, you can see it. It's reaching up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is super hot, really. So um, we're going to shut it down. So that's it for this video. Um, next time, we're going to be putting in the cooling system.